Hi, this is Jeff from Obedia, and today we're going to talk about how to use memory locations in Pro Tools to be able to get around and navigate really quickly. So we've got a session here, which already has some markers made, but uh, just to quickly cover this, the way to make a new marker is to simply hit the enter on your number pad and you get this dialog that comes up where you're free to name the marker. You can actually give it a certain number assignment and you also have a reference, which include bar and beat or absolute. And the main difference being if you choose bar and beat, you hit OK. And we go and just set our tempo to a manual tempo. You can see that it actually moves with the other markers. So they're staying bar and beat based based on the tempo. Now, if we put that back and we just go and change it to absolute, then you'll notice that even if we change our tempo, location nine stays put at an absolute sample based location. So we'll put that back. And we also have other various uh, properties here to choose from. Uh, your time properties include standard marker for different sections of a song. And if you wish to recall a particular selection, maybe you're working on the solo and you want to just quickly recall that, use a selection marker, or you can do none and have these other settings apply. So we've got the zoom settings, exactly where you have zoomed in or out at any given point. Pre and post roll times, if you're doing a lot of tracking and punching in, you can recall those. Track show hide configurations. If I'm working on just the chorus, a lot of times I'll do a track hide of everything else, but I'll save the complete mix so I can always recall that. It's very useful. Track heights. Again, if you're working on sections, this is useful. Group enables. This will recall uh, particular groups that you've set up. Then finally, window configurations, which when you select this, this will then recall different window sets that are available through the window configuration feature of Pro Tools. So we'll put that on regular marker, bar and beat. So if you wish to delete a marker, you just hit Alt or Option and simply delete it like that. You can also select and delete, or you can similarly drag down or up, and you see it turns into the trash can that will also delete the marker. So a couple of shortcuts to get around. Next thing I want to talk about is the memory locations window. On the PC, it's control five on the number pad. On the Mac, it's command five on the number pad, if you have a number pad. Otherwise, you would go to the window drop down menu and click on memory locations. So this window shows you all your memory locations. If you click on them, it then moves the cursor to that point in the song. It also tells you which features have been enabled for each marker and you can turn them on or off globally by just clicking on these and they sort of gray out to show you that they're not active anymore. There are also a bunch of functions you can access via this little drop down menu. New location, edit a certain location. You want to clear or delete or delete all of them and some other options as well. So in this window, you can actually hold the alter option. It turns into a little upside down pencil eraser. That's one way to delete markers. If you right click over a marker, it'll bring up its window. If you hold the control button on a Mac or the windows start key on the PC, it'll let you edit the same thing. You just click and it brings up the window. These are also useful. If you wish to select the several sections in a row, you just click from the beginning, start, hold shift, click to the end. As you can see, we've selected several sections there. Maybe I'll do like most of the song here. Now there are some useful keyboard shortcuts as well to help you recall sections. So uh, based on the number of your markers, say I want to recall marker one, I hit period on the number pad, one period. That jumps me to marker one. If I hit period five period, that jumps me to marker five. If I hit period one period, then shift period four period. Now I'm able to select between markers one and four for looping and auditioning material. Now there's more to cover with markers besides what I've talked about today, but this is a really good starting off point for those of you who wish to take your organizational skills to the next level, as well as speeding up your workflow when it comes to tracking and editing. This is Jeff from Obedia. Thanks for checking out the video.